Russia holding the talks is not a reason to put, uh, to put fire on coal. Delegates from Russia and Ukraine sit down for another round of peace talks as Russian troops are accused of targeting civilians trying to flee. The world is saying to Russia, stop these attacks immediately. Let the food and medicine in. Let the people out safely. The war in Ukraine is sending oil prices soaring, with prices spiking at the gas pump in Colorado and across the U.S. We could get to 425, maybe even 450 a gallon. We're looking at what the Biden administration can do to bring the costs down. Plus, it's closer to decision day for Aaron Rodgers when we expect to hear from the quarterback about his future and if it includes the Broncos. Russia could be committing war crimes in Ukraine. U.S. officials say they're documenting, quote, very credible reports of attacks on citizens in Ukraine. This video shows houses on fire that may have been targeted by Russian troops as civilians are caught in that crossfire. Thanks so much for joining us for Denver 7 News at 11. I'm Jason Grenauer. And this morning, delegates from Russia and Ukraine are sitting down for peace talks in an effort to come to a ceasefire nearly two weeks since fighting began. Faith Abube reports. This morning, Russian forces escalating their attacks on Ukrainian civilians while slowly advancing towards key cities in the country. Panicked parents and children in Irpin attempting to flee their burning neighborhoods, ducking to the ground and then running as Russian bombs explode nearby. According to the mayor, at least eight people were killed, including three members of the same family, when this Russian mortar hit. The U.N. says at least 400 civilians have been killed since Russia's war on Ukraine began, but warns actual figures are much higher. President Zelensky in a social media video saying, quote, it's murder, deliberate murder. In the southern city of Mariupol, two attempts to establish safe passage for civilians failed in as many days after Russia broke a temporary ceasefire. But today, Russia once again claiming it will allow the humanitarian corridors to open for civilians in major cities under attack. Zelensky rejecting the idea because the routes the Kremlin is proposing will lead directly into Russia or Belarus, which is aligned with Putin. President Zelensky ramping up his calls for NATO and the U.S. to impose a no-fly zone over Ukraine. It's the willingness to shoot down the aircraft of the Russian Federation, which is basically the beginning of World War III. Ukraine's foreign minister pushing back on that logic. Why would Russia dare to shoot down a NATO, a NATO plane knowing that it is doomed? And as more U.S. military aid arrives in Ukraine, the foreign minister is urging the U.S. and Poland to speed up the decision on whether Poland will supply Ukraine with MiG fighter jets in their arsenal that the U.S. would then replenish with American warplanes. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. Checking on the markets this morning, stocks opened lower today due to the war in Ukraine and spiking oil prices. Right now, stocks have been steadily trending down and the Dow has lost 2%. U.S. oil reached $130 a barrel, the highest since July 2008. Global oil prices are up more than 60% since the start of the year. Now that high price of oil is pushing the national average price for gas to more than $4 a gallon. It's the first time since 2008 prices are this high. In Colorado, AAA reports Colorado's average at $3.75. That's up nearly 40 cents from the last week. And you can expect gas prices to go even higher because the U.S. may soon ban Russian oil imports. Russia is the world's second largest producer of oil. We are now talking uh, to our European partners and allies to look uh, in a coordinated way uh, at the uh, prospect of banning the import of Russian oil uh, while making sure that there is uh, still an appropriate supply of oil on, on world markets. That's a very active discussion as we speak. Senior officials traveled to Venezuela over the weekend in an effort to minimize a possible fallout from that possible oil embargo on Russia. The country is a top oil exporter and Vladimir Putin's top ally in Latin America. The outcome of those talks wasn't immediately clear. Now, there are some things the Biden administration can do to lower gas prices. Option one, suspending the federal gas tax. Right now, it's 18 cents a gallon. That idea, though, is struggling to take off because there's concerns a decline in the tax would mean less money for infrastructure projects. Another option, allow winter gas to be used throughout the summer. Now, the EPA mandates most places use a cleaner form of gas from June to September. It's because in warmer months, gas has a greater chance of evapor evaporating, causing smog. Winter gasoline generally has higher emissions. It is more volatile. 
but it's also cheaper to produce. The White House could release more oil from the country's oil reserve. The president has already done that, but it has had little impact on gas prices. And the U.S. could increase, dom increase domestic energy production, but that would go against the president's climate change commitments to reduce drilling. The Biden administration wants public transit systems to invest in electric buses. One and a half billion dollars is available under the infrastructure law for transit agencies to buy low or no emission buses and build bus facilities. The White House is also giving struggling transit agencies in 18 states more than two billion dollars in pandemic relief money. That money will be used for day to day operations and to clean and sanitize public transportation. More pandemic funding is expected to be part of a bill to avoid a government shutdown. House Democrats could introduce the legislation as early as tomorrow to fund the government through September. It's also expected to include $10 billion in aid for Ukraine. A family who just moved to Colorado had their trailer and most of their belongings stolen. It happened in Denver over the weekend. As Denver 7's Rob Harris shows us, we wanted to get our Denver 7 Gives community involved to help. Where'd you put the other garbage can? Playtime with mom and dad is a good way to wake up from any nap. What are you doing? But for Jackson Ajami and his parents, Seth and Joanne, it's given them a chance this weekend to have a little bit of normalcy. They expected to be living out of suitcases as they moved hundreds of miles to Denver, but they did not expect to have only these suitcases after getting here. Certainly was a... <laughs> was not the welcome to Denver we were hoping for. The Ajamis just got into town Monday with their entire lives in Montana packed into this 24 foot trailer, along with thousands of dollars of aviation mechanic tools for Seth to use in his new job at DIA. The trailer sat locked and chained outside his brother's house all week until Saturday morning. Drove down the street to get to the highway and the just trailer was gone at that point. I know we were hoping at some point to buy a house here and so now that money is going to have to go to either get me new tools so I can do my job or uh, appliances to cook in the kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of the important stuff to us was that stuff that means a lot to us, stuff from our wedding, uh, stuff from when he was born. It's just like the stuff like like Jackson is like our only son and so it's all his first things there that I grieve the most that we have lost um sorry I think our first original reaction was hey thank god that we're okay the Ajamis now are looking for a place of their own in Colorado and figuring out how to replace all of the things inside it they're working with Denver police and they're asking people in the community to keep an eye out for a trailer like this with Connecticut license plates to the person or people who took the trailer they have this to say we forgive you honestly we are Christians and you know that all that stuff those are God's stuff if hearing the Ajami's story made you feel moved to show them just how welcoming and generous most Coloradans are, you can head to our website, thedenverchannel.com, click on Denver 7 Gives, and then find their cause in the drop-down menu. Every dollar of your donation will go directly towards them. Plus, we have other causes to help out people in our community who could use the help. In the newsroom, Rob Harris, Denver 7. You're looking live now at the state capitol, where this afternoon a House committee bill, they, a House committee rather, will discuss a bill to help people who have their packages stolen. Now that legislation would let people write up to $75 off of their taxes for buying lock boxes and other anti-theft items. People would just have to show some proof with a police report that they had some packages stolen. The tax credit would also apply to package delivery companies. Major League Baseball is expected to cancel more regular season games this week. League owners and players met in New York yesterday to try to, end, try to end the ongoing lockout, but the two sides couldn't come to an agreement. The first two series of the season are already canceled. Nuggets star Nikola Jokic put on one of the best performances in NBA history last night. He scored 30 points in the fourth quarter in overtime to give the Nuggets a 138-130 win over the Pelicans. The Joker ended the game with 46 points, 12 rebounds, 11 assists, 4 blocks, and 3 steals. No player in league history has ever done that. After the game, Jokic was his usual humble self. I had a good energy and the ball was fighting me and I was, uh, I was, uh, I was, uh, make it, I was scoring it. My teammates, teammates, uh, was looking for me. So I just happy to, to win the game. Psst, he's the MVP. The Nuggets have an important game against the Warriors tonight. Steph Curry will not play. He's sitting out to rest. Tip off from ball arena is at seven.
And it looks like the Packers are doing everything they can to keep quarterback Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay. ESPN reports the team made him a significant long-term contract offer. The Broncos are still a contender to land Rodgers if he doesn't re-sign with Green Bay. Rodgers has hinted he'll make a decision about his future before tomorrow afternoon's franchise tag deadline. Scientists are concerned about, concerned about the impacts of climate change, and some people may move because of the changing temperatures. Still ahead, we're looking at what makes Denver and other cities climate havens.